Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and I'm in my version 1.1 Let's Play world, where I would like to demonstrate for you guys a Rube Goldberg machine I made as part of my Let's Play series. I made this in episodes 57 through 59, so uh, if you don't want any spoilers, clip the video now, but if you're interested in checking out this Rube Goldberg machine, stay tuned, because I'm going to walk through all the pieces and how they work. So this big old complicated machine starts right here. Now before I get started, you guys should know that I don't have any uh, cheats or NEI or TMI going with this. Um, I did this all legit as part of my Let's Play series, uh, but of course it does use a bunch of different mods, and my main focus here was to feature a bunch of the different mods available in the game to, uh, you know, see how they work together and show them off. So the first step that we start off with is a button. That's all it is. We press the button, and it sends a redstone signal through the block that it's on to this, a deployer from Red Power 2. Inside is a water bucket. Deployers effectively right-click whatever's in their inventory, and this will deploy a water source block from the bucket, and uh, will send the water down this line, where it intersects with a laser from the laser mod. Uh, the laser mod here, this laser is emitting a simple white laser, and this is a sensor that emits a redstone signal when it's receiving a laser pulse. The water will come down and interrupt this laser, turning off this redstone signal. This is a wireless redstone piece that I'll get to in a minute. This is a NOT gate from Red Power 2 that is connected to some Red Power 2 wiring, and this is just a simple redstone wire similar to this redstone dust. And what this does will turn on another laser from the laser mod. This has a red lens on the front, which will break any blocks it hits. And down the line, we've got some blocks to break. This guy right here is a piece of cobblestone. And what's not apparent is that there's actually two more lasers, one here, and another sensor here, the same setup as over here, but it's drilled into some cobblestone blocks to hide it. The sensor will turn on once this block is broken by the red laser and allow the white laser in this block to hit the sensor here, which then runs over to the blue laser. A blue laser has a tractor beam type effect where it pulls any blocks on the ground towards it, and it pulls items mostly, so this cobblestone will get broken into a cobblestone item, like this, and then get pulled into this area with the blue laser, which is sitting over a transposer from Red Power 2. The transposer is connected to some pneumatic tubing, again from Red Power 2, that transfers items through the tubing into an item detector. The item detector here is set to emit a redstone signal pulse whenever an item travels through it, and that piece of cobblestone will go through this pneumatic tube and into the item detector where it will pulse this frequency of redstone which I'll get to in a moment and go into this a macerator from industrial craft the macerator is set up to use an energy crystal as its power source and right next to this guy is a, another transposer now a transposer from red power 2 will suck up an item that falls into it but when it receives a redstone signal and it's adjacent to a machine it will pull the item out of the output slot of a macerator and that's what's done behind the scenes with this Red Power 2 cabling and logic gates. First off, we have a Buildcraft logic gate, which is set to emit a redstone signal when the adjacent inventory has a piece of sand. The macerator right here will macerate the piece of cobblestone into sand. Once that is complete, it emits a redstone signal, which activates this timer and also activates this redstone wire, pulling the sand out of the macerator through the transposer and up this column of pneumatic tubing. Meanwhile, the redstone signal will travel through this repeater into this RS NOR gate. So this RS latch here will toggle, turning off this redstone signal and allowing this timer to run for one cycle. This NOT gate is connected and will turn on once the RS latch is toggled and activate this wireless redstone and a portal from the portal gun mod. This portal will open. The redstone timer is set to 15 seconds, at which point it will tick, toggling the RS latch, keeping the redstone wire enabled, and stopping the timer because of this cabling here, which will also turn off the portal. Meanwhile, the piece of sand is traveling through the pneumatic tubes into an item detector, which will emit a redstone signal at the same time the sand lands in a deployer. The deployer will deploy the piece of sand, which will appear as a block, similar to this, except it would be sand. That block will then fall through the portal 
and land on this portal over here, which is connected to the same wireless redstone frequency right there. This portal will then open. The sand block will be tossed through the portal and land snugly right here in between this white laser. This white laser will then disable the sensor block, which is right here, and the sensor block will, through some redstone cabling underneath here, activate a counter, which will count the number of items, and at the same time activate this green laser. A green laser helps items to grow faster, specifically cactus which is what we have inside this deployer, which is also activated when this white laser is open here. So what happens is the sand will land and the deployer will immediately deploy a piece of cactus. A buildcraft logic gate detects the inventory empty signal. So as soon as the cactus is deployed, the inventory is empty. And that will emit a redstone signal onto a block breaker from Red Power 2. A block breaker will eat the block in front of it, specifically the deployer, and send it out the pneumatic tube system in the back up to a builder, which I'll get to in a minute. Inside this alchemical chest from Equivalent Exchange, we have a black hole band. Any items that land on the ground will get automatically sucked into the chest. The cactus will grow one block high and will then be adjacent to the block breaker, which will automatically cause it to fall to the ground just from regular standard cactus mechanics. And that piece of cactus that falls will get sucked into this chest, which is connected to an advanced gate from the uh, teleport pipes mod. That is only allowing cactus to go through, and the buildcraft gate here detects cactus in inventory and emits a redstone signal, which turns on this buildcraft engine, which starts pumping cactus out of the alchemical chest. The gold gate also detects items traversing through the gate and emits a red pipe signal, which connects to this gold pipe. The gold pipe, when it receives a red pipe signal, meaning items are traveling through this wooden gate, wooden pipe, will cause the gold pipe to activate sending items quickly through and activating this redstone pipe. The redstone pipe sends a redstone signal down to a counter, which counts up to five pieces of cactus. The five pieces of cactus will land directly in this condenser from equivalent exchange. Finally, once that fifth piece of cactus goes through, a redstone signal is sent to this block breaker, which breaks the sand and sends it through a pneumatic tubing system into this chest. Finally, there'll be a sixth piece of cactus, which was sitting on top of the sand. That will get sucked into the alchemical chest, which will allow it to go through the piping system and will become the sixth piece of sand here. That piece of sand, or the sixth piece of cactus, will then compress down using equivalent exchange condenser rules to turn into two pieces of wheat. Buildcraft logic pipes, logistics pipes, have a provider pipe here, which leaves the first stack of items available inside the condenser, which is this wheat. The two pieces of wheat produced by this condenser are then supplied using a supplier pipe, two pieces of wheat, into this chest which underneath is connected up with a buildcraft logic gate which detects any items in inventory emit a redstone signal. That redstone signal is then transferred through a redstone wire into this transposer. Over here we have a apiary from the forestry mod with steadfast queens inside. The steadfast queen produces a specific type of honeycomb called a cocoa comb which produces when placed in a centrifuge, cocoa. The cocoa combs produced by this steadfast queen are then automatically pumped out through a wooden gate, a wooden pipe underneath the apiary. The cocoa combs are then sent up through an apiarist pipe, which allows any items, specifically cocoa combs, to go through the blue line. Those items are sent into the centrifuge, which are quickly broken down into beeswax and cocoa. This diamond pipe from Buildcraft separates the cocoa combs out through the blue line, and anything that's not a cocoa comb will go down the green path. The cocoa combs are then, or the cocoa beans, are then stored in this equivalent exchange chest, which is connected to the transposer which pulls out one cocoa bean each time items land in this chest. So two pieces of wheat will land here with one cocoa connected to a automatic crafting table from Buildcraft, which produces a cookie. 
the cookie is then automatically pumped out through another redstone pipe. And that redstone pipe activates a repeater, which opens a portal, and the portal finally lands over here. This system is self-resetting. As soon as this line is broken, and an item detector emits the fact that the item has traveled through this item detector, frequency 110 on our wireless transmitter is sent over here to our deployer from Red Power 2. The deployer, which now has an empty bucket inside, gets right-clicked and collects the water source block, stopping the water from traveling through this line. That water, once it is removed from this area, reactivates this laser, emitting a frequency 111 signal on wireless redstone, which is connected underneath here. This wireless redstone activates another deployer with cobblestone inside. The cobblestone is replaced in this line. At the same time, because this water is gone, the redstone wire turns off the laser, allowing this system to self-reset. Over here, a wireless redstone signal is sent once the counter reaches 5. That wireless redstone signal is connected to a filter, which pulls the blueprint out of this builder. This builder's blueprint is designed to replace the deployer here with the cactus block inside. The deployer, or the filter from Red Power 2, pulls the blueprint out of the builder and just cycles it back into the top of the builder where it's automatically replaced, resetting the builder. And a gate from here detects when there's work scheduled in this builder emit a redstone signal. This is a power switch pipe from the additional Buildcraft Objects mod and that will allow the power teleport pipe to send power directly into the builder. The builder replaces the deployer and the system is reset. Let's see it all in action. So let's see it in action. When I press the button, the water is deployed by the deployer, which intersects that beam allowing the red laser to turn on. The blue laser sucks the cobblestone into this pipe, which sends a wireless redstone pulse back to stop the water. Once the water is stopped, the system self-resets. The cobblestone is macerated into sand. Once that occurs, the system back here activates, opening the portal and pulling the sand out. The sand travels through the deployer and lands over here, which is automatically a piece of cactus is placed on top by the deployer. The block breaker eats the deployer, which allows the cactus to grow. Once the cactus grows quickly as a result of the green laser, all the cactus is sucked into the alchemical chest nearby. Once we've got five pieces of cactus that go through this piping system from Buildcraft, it automatically resets the system, pulling in the last piece of cactus and resetting the Buildcraft system. The cactus is turned into wheat, and the presence of wheat in this chest recalls a cocoa bean. The cocoa bean and wheat is combined to create cookies, which is the final output of the system. Once the cookies travel through the redstone pipe, it activates the portal, and the cookies land over here. Hooray! And because the system is self-resetting, I can run it all again immediately by just pressing the button once more, and everything would occur exactly again. So I hope you guys enjoyed checking out Direwolf 20's Rube Goldberg machine. It's a pretty fun little toy, to be honest with you guys. It's a lot, a lot of fun, and uh, it was a great time building it. If you enjoyed seeing it in action and you haven't seen my Let's Play series, definitely check it out. Like I said, I built this in episodes 57 through 59, so there's plenty of other episodes as well for you to check out earlier on if you don't know anything about these mods and want to learn more. This is Direwolf20 signing off. Take it easy.